I couldn't help it. It just popped in there. What? What just popped in there? I, I, I tried to think. Look! No! It can't be. What is it? It can't be. What did you do, Ray? you don't see every day what's going on everybody Ryan with golf carts modified welcome to my little spiel here today we're gonna be going over an eco lithium battery electrical setup now for demonstration purposes we do have a eco 105 slim guys it doesn't matter all the eco batteries hook up almost identical except for a few and we will cover that here in just a little bit but for right now let's jump into wiring up a full eco battery lithium all right guys, like I mentioned before, all of your eco batteries are all gonna hook up basically the same way. Only main difference is the way you mount the battery at the cart. Now, in this video, we're gonna cover the proper technique on how to hook this up. Guys, it's actually a pretty simple design. You have your main positive out, your main negative out. You're gonna have your on off button for your battery. And then you're gonna have your external port that goes to your harness for your brand new meter. So whenever you're working on your cart, you're going to have two cables no matter what cart you're working on. You're going to have a positive end cable that's running from your solenoid, and then you're going to have a main negative cable that's running back to the controller. Now to make this simple, make it easy so you don't mess up, I always put a black zip tie on my negative cable and a white zip tie on my positive cable. That way I don't ever get them mixed up and accidentally short something out. Now something to remember. Anytime you're dealing with electronics, especially batteries like this, you always want to start off with your biggest lug and your biggest cable first. <laughs> now, this is going to be pulling the most voltage and the most amps, so whenever we're plugging this, we're going to want our big lug flat on this face, just like this. Then, all of your other accessories can stack on top. Less resistance to your bigger cable, so on and so on. Now in this kit, all of your eco batteries are gonna come with an onboard eco battery charger. Guys, these are pretty simple to hook up. You're gonna have one end. It's gonna have your state of charge light. I always like to mount mine where I can see the light if I have to lift, lift open the seat. The other thing is, is guys, when you mount your charger, you need to make sure that you have at least six inches of air space from this fan for adequate cooling. <clears throat> That's what she said. You know, if you're in a cart and you mount this thing and you're riding next to a wall, this is not going to cool the way it needs to. You need to make sure that this is at least six inches of open air space so that th this will charge. Now, like I said, when we're hooking up our battery to our cart, we're going to run from the main positive to the incoming side of the solenoid. I'll always put my big lug first. Your charger is going to have a positive and negative cable. You can stack those on there just like that. And the same goes for your negative cable. This is going to go back to the B minus on your controller. And then your chargers will stack on top of that. Something else included in the kit is a eco battery inverter or converter, whatever you want to call it, reducer. Guys, these are actually really nice. They come with their own plug and play system. And it has its complete wiring harness that comes with it. Now, this one you can kind of mount and tuck anywhere you like. Every part is a little different. Some places you can mount it easily inside the battery compartment some you might have to get some self tapper screws to mount like if you have a club car precedent as far as the way they wire everything's wired the same you've got a top notch here that locks locks into place now guys when it comes to wiring this eco battery made it really easy for you all of your wiring schematic is right here on the end of the 
reducer. It even tells you yellow, 48 plus, black, 48 negative, key on, orange. Red is your 13.5 volts out positive and your black is your 13.5 volts negative out. So when we come over to hook this up, this will be one of the last things you stack on your battery. Yellow going to positive, black going to negative. This is going to leave you a positive 13 coming out, a positive, or I'm sorry, a black uh, 13 coming out. Now guys, something important to remember, I always like to wire everything to a fuse block. This makes it much easier and safer. This specific block, you have a main positive pole and a main negative pole. Now you can come in and safely wire up all your accessories. By the way, you can find these on Amazon. I think this one is about $17 to $18. The only wire you have left is going to be your orange wire. Now, this is your activation wire, accessory wire, whatever you want to call it, your key wire. This goes back to your ignition. This is what activates the reducer to turn on and off. If not, and let's say you ran this to the positive on this, this thing would stay on all the time, pulling a constant load. Hey, that's what she said. On the battery. So always wire this to the key switch. Going back to the charger, Eco Battery has given you a new water pack connection. Now, certain carts will have certain outlets for it. If you have a club car or an easy go, they have a body mounted plug. On a Yamaha, they don't have it out yet, so they send you a regular 110 plug. Guys, other than hooking that up, the only thing left you have is your new wiring harness for your meter. They've made this super simple. You have a 5 pin weather pack connection that has a keyway in it. It's going to go right into the battery and screw on. That's what she said. On the other side, you're going to have a 8 pin Molex and a 4 pin Molex. Guys, you can't really mess that up. You're going to have your 8 pin up top and your 4 pin on the bottom. So wiring that up is super easy. Now, you will notice there are two access ports in this harness. This is for a CAN bus communication system, which you will not need. Most of the time, if I'm putting these in a cart, I do like to put a piece of electric tape over the top of these just to make sure we don't get any moisture condensation inside our plugs. Other than that, that's how easy wiring up any eco battery lithium cell is going to be for you. Before we get started, let's go over some of the tools that we're going to need to install these batteries. Guys, right off the bat, you're going to need a good basic set of hand tools. Now, your main bolt for your positive and negative are going to be a half inch. I recommend using a deep well socket. This will help. You don't really need the extension, but put an extension on everything. Second of all, to mount your meter slash gauge, you are going to need a two inch hole saw. Now, the meter is a little bit bigger than two inch. That's what she said. <laughs> Some people will use a razor blade. Guys, I have found out, especially in plastic, you go to any of your big box stores, this is called a reamer. This works really well. Normally when you use a two inch hole saw, you can go around the hole once, maybe twice with this, and it's the perfect size to slide that meter in. That's what she said! You're also gonna need a power tool. Sorry, can't help it, everybody does it. You're gonna need that, that way you can put a nut driver insert in it. That way, if you do use self-tapping screws on your reducer and your charger, you have that with you. I am not a big fan of self-tapping screws. I do realize in some cases they come in really handy. Normally, I like to drill a hole, put a bolt in it if I can. Every once in a while, you really don't have a choice. So if you're going to use a self-tapping screw, make sure you got your power tool. Guys, other than that, there's not really a whole lot of tools you need to install it except for these right here. It's pretty basic install. It's actually one of the easiest modifications you can do to your golf cart. Now guys, remember I did say almost every battery sets up the same way. There are a few that are just a little bit different. One of them being the TXT 38 volt cart or a TXT 48 series cart. Guys, if you have the D square box like this, that's a 36 volt cart, you are going to have coming out of the back of that 
a main positive, a main negative, and then you're gonna have a little red wire, okay? It's gonna come out of the back of your box like this. Most of the time there is a spade connector there. Guys, this reed wire on EasyGo has to be hooked back up to the positive on the battery. If you do not hook this up on a stock cart, you're not gonna work. Now, if you've converted over to a Navitas AC kit, you no longer need this cable. But if you do have a stock motor and controller on your cart, on your TXT, you will have to install this red wire going back there. What we have here is a 38 volt Eco 105 mounted in an EasyGo TXT. Now guys, when I'm talking about the reed switch, the old charging port was right here and it had a red wire that runs off of it and it runs down to another red wire that goes into the main harness. So you need to run a little jumper wire from here up to your positive on a TXT 36 volt. Now, if you buy a 48, 48, 105 and you're still on a series cart or a stock motor, that cable is gonna be orange and not red. So if you do install an Eco 48105 on your 48 volt series cart that has a stock motor controller, you will have an orange wire. Make sure that orange wire goes back to your positive. That's also called a reed switch or a charger interlock cable. See what I tell you, that's a pretty easy setup to drop in. Not a whole lot going on. There are a few things that you gotta work through like putting the meter in, bolting in a new charger. Other than that, pretty simple stuff. Now guys, the reason we did a video like this was to show you the battery out of the car. That way it was easier to see to hook up. The other reason is I wanted to have one video that just showed the electrical hookup and then we're gonna do much shorter videos of just installing the battery in each car. That way, if you already know how to hook up a battery but you're not sure how to mount it, the mounting videos will be probably between four minutes to five minutes long, maybe six minutes long. But other than that, everything else that you need to know about this is gonna be in this video, especially wiring it up. And if there's something you wanna see, if you wanna see how we wire one up in our carts, like how we wanna do custom wiring, just drop me a comment and let me know. Tell me what carts you have, what you wanna see, see if we can't get it in video. Also, if you're not comfortable hooking up this, guys, don't be ashamed to take your cart to a reputable dealer. There are good people that will install these for you, you know, that, that are gonna take care of you. If you're in Georgia, there's two or three places in Georgia that I know that are really good about installing them. There's quite a few people in Texas. If you're in the Houston area, Texas, you can always bring your cart to me and I'll install it for you for a small little fee. But other than that, guys, it's really not that hard to set up. You know, at the end of the day, this is probably a three out of a 10 on the difficulty meter. Not that hard. Guys, thanks for sticking with us. Make sure to like and follow. We're gonna have a lot more of the battery videos coming out where we're installing them in the carts. We're also going to be working on a big pink cart here, putting it up on 30 inch tires. Make sure to hit that like button and follow. Guys, if you're not following us on Facebook or TikTok or Instagram, make sure to go give us a like. We also have a new page on Facebook called Golf Carts Modified of Texas. That's going to be nothing but short videos, funny videos, stuff like that. So guys, as always, go modify.